right. Shalom. First and foremost, just as always, I'd like to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto the one true living power, being Yahweh, and that of the Messiah whom the world calls ignorantly Jesus, being Yahweh Shai. Those are the only names in which salvation may be obtained, whether you have been given the Spirit to receive that knowledge or not. I'd like to give double honors unto the elders and the apostles at GMS Grand Millstone who have taught me this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai who do her well today. Once again, whether you've been given the spirit to receive that or not, and peace, love, blessing, salutations be unto the elect of the nation of Israel, beginning with 140 and 4,000 prophets, all the way down to the remaining elect of our nation prophesied to come out of the lies and the deceits of this world and return to the identity and the knowledge of of who we truly are, man. All right? Ezekiel 37, the valley of dry bones, man. The great coming back to life, the resurrection of Israel, man. These true Israelites, which would today consist of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who have been scattered throughout the earth through slavery and colonization, man. All right? These particular curses of the Bible were prophesied to hit this nation. You see, this nation of people who would be scattered among the earth. Let's go ahead and grab a couple precepts. This is the book of um, book of Hosea. thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou know, knowest not. And this we've seen come to pass <laughs> by us being scattered throughout all nations and namely be brought up here to build the foundations of what you modernly see as America. Man. Going on it says for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. You see? The true 12 tribes of Israel are the only people that you could identify by these prophecies, by these curses, man. To understand it in a way that, you know, was easy for us on this side of, as our minds have been broken down and colonized, you see? It's like the father directing his son to show 
kill him or teach him a lesson. That's exactly what's been done to our nation. We broke the covenant of the Most High. As the book of Hebrews, the 8th chapter, will tell us, Lord willing, we'll see how it goes, maybe we'll jump into that uh, chapter. When we broke the law, or the, the covenant we had with the Heavenly Father, and so we got cut off, man. Alright? We got cut off from that, uh, from that blessing, man. And we got all these curses to fall upon us as a form of chastisement, as a form of correction, man. Now the elect are learning accountability through this correction through this chastisement while the two-thirds are rebelling, man. There's only one way out of this hell that you currently call yourself living in. And that's through Yahweh Bachin Yahweh Shai, man. As one of the uh, brothers in the camp out here like to say, man, there's only, the only way out is up. This is the book of uh, First Maccabees. Actually, we'll go to Second Maccabees, chapter six, and verse one. It says, not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of their God. You see that, man? So when Esau came into power, which his beginnings being, you know, at the time of these Grecians, and when I say beginnings, I mean the time, the beginning of his power, man, as we'll see in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 26. It says, And after that came out came his brother out, and his hand took hold the hill of Esau. And his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was three score years old when, when she bare him. Right? So you had Jacob and Esau, the progenitors of Israel. And the so-called Caucasoid, man, who stemmed from Esau Edom. In layman's term, the so-called white man, though the word white is a definition which is completely contrary to the likeness of these people, you see? Which, you know, something you got to understand, too, if we've been scattered throughout all nations, as we read in Hosea, the 8th chapter and the 8th verse, then our offspring has been scattered among all these nations. So you really can't just go about judging off the flesh Who's who? This is why the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, the second chapter in the 15th verse, starting at the 15th verse, goes into what? How we are judged of no men. We judge all things, yet we are judged of no man. And the, the, the you know, average peon around you, they don't know how to judge according to the scriptures, man. You see, we do. And part of knowing how to judge properly, according to the law, you see, is not by judging off of the flesh at this time, because we've been scattered among all nations. Now, there's particular, you know, things that you could pick up on, signs and details, things that, you know, describe the children of Israel that you could use, but nonetheless, we've been scattered throughout all nations, man, you see. So we have Israelites coming forth looking all different types of ways, fulfilling the prophecy of Revelation, the seventh chapter of the innumerable multitude, man. All right, but let's go ahead and continue. It says, um, which let me back up a little bit. Verse uh, 23, it says, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, 
and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. You see? Here it is, man. The elder shall serve the younger. Esau was prophesied to serve Israel. All right? But with that being said, in the 27th verse here, we'll read... part of Isaac's blessing right here, the 40th verse, it says, and by thy sword thou shalt live, so like in Isaac's blessing, <clears throat> Esau's blessing, right, this is the, the, the blessing of Esau, after Jacob received his blessing, the youngest son received the blessing of the Most High, which fulfilled the prophecy of what we just read in Genesis, the 25th chapter, you see the whole structure of these scriptures is based off of prophecy, man, that's why Yahweh Shai said, <clears throat> Or why, why it's written in the book of Revelation, the 19th chapter, that Yahweh Shai is the, is the uh, 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 doctrine of prophecy, if I'm not mistaken. We'll go ahead and grab that in a second, Lord willing. We're going on, it says, And it shall come to pass that thou shalt have dominion. You see? Thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break the yoke off thy neck. Right? So here it is prophesied that <laughs> though Esau is ultimately going to be at the at the bottom, right? His brother received the blessing. But there is a time that Esau will have to rule on this earth, man. There's a time that he's going to have to to not have that yoke upon him, but have it upon Israel, man. Which is again the beginnings of that taking place here in the book of 2 Maccabees. Well, really, really, during the time of the Maccabees, man, you'll find a lot of the history of the beginnings of the Grecians, which, you know, fills a void within these scriptures between the New and the Old Testament. All right, but anyway, this is going on, 2 Maccabees 6 and 1. Not long after this, and you know what, man, I'm going to go ahead and grab that revelation before I forget to, before I get further into that. Revelation chapter 19. Verse 11, if I'm not mistaken. No. Verse 10. It says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship God, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. You see, the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy, man. What did Yahweh Shai say? I am written in the volume of the book, man. You see? So these prophecies are... are this, is, this is the Most High talking. This is the Most High telling you everything that will come to pass, man. And some of it has. Which is why you get the understanding and the context of what's going on during the time of the New Testament. During the time of the Apocrypha. And during the times that we are in now. 2 Maccabees 6 and 1. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not live after the laws of their God. You see? So basically, man, they wanted us to become heathens. And of course, what heathen would we become? The heathens who we were living among, man. It's only natural, man. In fact, they tell you if you put if you if you put multiple birds in a cage together and one bird is a different color than the others, that bird will actually pluck its feathers and kill itself, man. Because it realizes that it's a different color. Right? So naturally, if you're living among, you know, the, the, the a multitude of people who are all the same and you're the different one, you're going to begin to make changes, picking up their customs, picking up their heritage, man, taking part in their holidays, taking on their wives. Which we could find that context in the book of Ezra. In the book of Nehemiah. Right? Let's go ahead and grab that real quick. Just a quick example. We'll go to the book of uh, Nehemiah. Chapter 13. And, uh... Verse 
verse 23, in those days I saw, uh, I, I also, Selakia, in those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. Right, so these Jews, these men, these Israelite men were marrying heathen women. And by them is the book of Numbers 1 and 18, and just as, you know, just, just, that's the word I'm looking for, man. Just, just as, as, as reality, I guess for lack of, lack of a better word, just as reality proves and shows you, the man holds the seed and the woman holds the egg. So that seed, the spirit comes from the, from the loins of the father, man. The egg, if you go and eat an egg from Safeway, right? You go to the, the grocery store, your fries, whatever it is that you have, your Kroger, whatever it is you have in your area, man, you go pick up an egg and you, and you open up that egg. Is there life in that egg? Well, no, not until, not until the, the, the rooster had put the life within that egg. You see? So the Heavenly Father created the man to fill that role, as Numbers 1 and 18 tells us. Right? We declare our pedigrees through the through the names of our fathers. Right? You come from the loins of your father. So anyway, they were taking on these heathen women and having upon them Israelite children. But yet, they were holding the customs of their mothers, which is why, verse 24, reads, And their children spake in half of the speech of Ashdod and could not speak the Jews language but according to the language of each people you see that man according to the language of each people so they couldn't even speak the the Lashuan Kwadash the holy tongue man as the prologue of the Apoc of the Apocrypha tells you or the the prologue of the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus tells you that it was a shame it, it was it was Worse than eating swine's flesh to speak in the language of the Jews or of the of the Greeks. You see, and why was that such a shame? Because as we were reading in 2 Maccabees the sixth chapter, those customs begin to be what was what was hot. You see, again, if you're surrounded by the multitude, you're gonna begin to make changes to 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 look, to act, and, and live like that multitude, man. And that's what we began doing, man. In fact, the apocryphal will even tell you that even with the wearing of hats was a heathen custom. And who do you see? Who do you see looking the flyest with their hats, man? Jake, <laughs> still to this day. You see? So going on, it says, uh, verse 25, let's see, let's see what they did about these children. Right? Verse 25, it says, And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them. So he even put his hands upon them, man, and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons for yourself. You see that? So they began to, to cast off these children, man. They began to make a stop to all this. And then, and then in fact, when, when you go a little bit deeper into it, into, deeper into this, the book of Nehemiah and the book of Ezra, they began to uh, uh, cast off all these children, man. That's why when Yahweh Shai came, it was such a... Uh, you know, it was such a a, a a thing to be marveled at when Yahweh Shai was, was, you know, dealing with the, the lost Jews, the, the, the scattered Israelites, man, that you'll find here in the book of, uh, in the book of, you know, well, well, all through the scriptures, man, but one piece, namely, that stands, stands out, John chapter 7 and verse, um, Verse 24, if I'm not mistaken. No, not 24. It's a little further. It says, um, verse 35. It says, Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go? Speaking of Yahweh Shai, that we shall not find him. Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? And, uh, you know, to go even a little bit deeper on this verse, when you go into the to the Hebrew words, or many of the newer translations even will have it written that way, but this word Gentile goes into the word Greek. So who, will he go to the dispersed among the Greeks and teach and, and, and teach them? All these Israelites who have been dispersed among these Greeks, man, who, who were what? Offshoots 
or the product really of prophecy of what we've been reading, man. The outcome, all right, of what was beginning to happen in the book of the Maccabees, man. All right? And that's why the uh, 24th verse says this. This is why this stood out to mind. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. You see? Judge not according to the appearance, man. We've been scattered throughout the whole earth at this time. And that's why, again, Yahweh Shai was such a thing to be marveled at. Speaking to these scattered Israelites. That's why That's why all these letters have things written in them like this. James 1 and 1. James, a servant of God, to the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashayak, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting to the twelve tribes. This entire letter, the entire letter of the book of James is written to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. The twelve tribes of Israel, man. This is the prophecy of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Um, let's go ahead and jump back to that uh, second Maccabees and then we'll close it up here soon. And even in this itself, man, this 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 shows why without the Apocrypha, there's a, 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 a void hole in these scriptures, man. There's a voidness between the New and the Old Testament. Going on, verse uh, 2, it says, we'll read, we'll read verse 1 again. It says, Not long after this, the king sent an old man to, uh, of Athens. And when he, well, something else too, man, when you when you hear these Greeks, it even tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians, you see the uh, first and second chapter, how the, how the Grecians loved wisdom, man. So these Grecians, they love to talk and carry themselves. I mean, they're Edomites, man. Even to this day, Esau, Esau almost talks like a whole nother language than we do, man. He tries to sound like he's, you know, on a deeper level, man. And that's what they, you know, that's what they, they, they were doing back then too, man. You see, they honored wisdom. They honored the wisdom of men. So they sent this old ass Edomite that knew how to talk. It's like they, it's like going to a, a, you know, go to buy a car, man. What is their job? Their job is to is to talk to you a particular way. Their job is to get you to buy a car, man. And they're good. They're gonna do. This. If you ain't ever been into a spot like that, man, you go in there and it's like they pulled out a wand and they were just trying to do everything they could to get you to buy one, even if you didn't plan on buying one in there. So you gotta have a little bit of some backbone, to, you know, tell them to, you know, hell no, I ain't buying no car or whatever. But you know, that's the same thing with this, man. They said in this old guy that 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 he knew how to talk, man. That was his job. The king chose him out of all anybody he could have chose in his kingdom. So he chose this old man of Athens to come and compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of their God. Going on verse 2. And to pollute the temple of Jerusalem and to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympus. So our temple, our connecting point between us and the Most High. They changed it to call it the temple, the temple of Jupiter Olympus. And when you look up this word, I've done lessons on this before. When you look at look up this name, Jupiter Olympus, man, and you're gonna see this devil looks just like that white Christ that they set before us, being colonized and enslaved today. You see? Let's go ahead and brainwash these people, even though they are the are the chosen seed of Israel. You see, let's make them think that they're not the chosen people. In fact, that we are the chosen people. And let's go ahead and make their God look like us. A Caucasoid from the loins of Esau. Right? It says, and that in Gerizim of Jupiter, the defender of strangers. So part of this, 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 this uh, uh, deity's title, Jupiter, was that he was the defender of strangers. So we begin to call ourselves strangers, call upon these, these Idumean deities to defend us, which brought our minds, it was the beginning of our minds being destroyed to the way it was today, fulfilling what we just read out of the book of Jeremiah, man, the prophesy that we would lose our heritage and who we were as a people. Going on, it says, 
as they did desire that dwelt in the place. You see? And this is why, you know, I like this uh, uh, sixth verse too, man. Neither. Oops, walk in. It says, Neither was it lawful for a man to keep the Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profane himself at all to be a Jew. You see? So it became a, a law for you to not take part in the Sabbath or the ancient feasts, which these ancient feasts, many of them, tell us in the law that if you don't take part in them, you will be cut off from, from being an Israelite, man. You will be cut off from the people. So again, that's why all these Israelites were cut out of that inner circle of Israel during the time of the New Testament, during the time of Yahweh Shai. That's why they were kicking people out of the church, even who were, who were uh, 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 talking with Yahweh Shai, man. Look at the blind men. They kicked him out of the church, and that was like you being kicked out of the people, man. That was like you being cut out uh, uh, of the nation. Your own family members wouldn't talk to you no more. Because that's part, of, that's part of, uh, of, our, of our culture too, man. In fact, that was written during the time of Cornelius. What did he say? You know that it's an uncommon thing for, for you to keep company with a man who's a, not a Jew. So if you were cut out of the, the, the nation, man, you know, that's basically like you receiving the, receiving the X and being, being kicked out of the kingdom, man. You a vagabond now. the story of the prodigal son, man. That's why Yahweh Shai was such a marvelous thing. Going on, it says, um, you know, actually, I think we could go ahead and we could go ahead and, and, and end it there, man. I think the, the point has been made. Um, let me go ahead and finish breaking off part of this, breaking uh, down a part of the scripture. It says, um, the sixth Neither verse, was it law. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. You see, so it even became a law. For if you were to profess yourself to be a Jew and Israelite then you'd be put to death man and we have accounts of this happening in the in the books of the Maccabees the seven Maccabees brothers that got put to death you see but anyway with that Lord willing this is edifying man we'll go ahead and uh, give all praises honor and glory once more unto Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rakaha Kodash double honors unto the elders and the apostles at GMS Grand Millstone and peace love blessing salutations be unto the elect a hopeful elect of the nation of Israel all those who are out there doing the best to make the calling of their election sure pushing this truth man it ain't, an, it, ain't, it ain't an easy thing to do you see the heavenly father chose you out of all this infinite time and space all these vessels around us man all these people out here the extras in this movie the heavenly father chose you man you see so let that uh you know let that be that light to keep you running man with that we'll go ahead and say shallow one